yeah, basically it's about 6 o'clock. I think we can uh, get started. Right. And uh, so I guess I'll say hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Clutch's Vault. My name is Mike, and today I have two very special guests from Community Gaming. I have Mr. Rhino, and I have Mr. PH. How you doing, guys? How's it going, guys? Man, it feels good to be back on the airwaves. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> So, yeah, for those of you listening, uh, uh, PH and Rhino brought a very fun idea to my attention, and it was to talk mainly about a couple points. And uh, some of these points mainly are... Actually, I had a little list right here, and now I can't seem to find it. Uh-oh. Here we go. So, the points we're going to be going over today, and obviously we'll elaborate more on this, is that we're going to be talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole right now. Uh, basically, about people who are getting... Into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! in, you know, 2020. People are coming back into the game in 2020. Uh, the current state of, like, how Konami's releasing products, like their new sets, the main booster sets, because a lot has changed. And I think just the current state of the game right now, given the meta, and given the, uh, the health crisis that we're in right now. And we're not going to use that bad word, so we're just going to use some key, like, some little, uh, keywords to avoid that. Uh... PH, what was your little keyword you want to use? Beer bug. The beer bug, okay. <laughs> Do you have one, Rhino? Oh, no. I mean, everyone's been calling it the crush card, right? That's a good one. Actually, I like that because that's Yu Gi Oh! related, so yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Okay, the crush card. Actually, that's, uh, that's a good one. I like that better than the beer bug, for sure. Yeah, beer bug's more generic, I guess, but uh, yeah, we'll go with the uh, crush card. Yeah, for sure. Alright, so, anywho, uh, sorry, just move my stuff around over here. Uh, so I guess, let's uh, get started with this. Uh, let's, let's, let's talk about our first topic. Again, please chime in, guys, whenever you want to. Uh, it's not like, uh, it's, it's not like a, you have to raise your hand to speak thing, you know, we're all, we're all friends here, so. Um, yes, sir. Now, uh, yeah, you guys mentioned that you had some friends that were, Getting into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, I think uh, you you mentioned one of them is from New Zealand. Is is he one that's getting back into the game, or he's he's new to Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, I think he's returning from the game, like after a couple months break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then obviously uh, Ryan's brother, he was returning to the game. A couple friends. Oh, Justin. Yeah, we got a couple of different people coming, trying to come back. Even even me per se, you know, I'm really looking. Well, until uh, the ankle incident. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure sometime soon, once Locals gets opened back up, I'm really, really excited to get back in there and actually start playing a little bit more competitively, more so than just on duel and stuff like that. I've amassed quite a bit of cards. and Yeah, it's funny. Like, whenever I would come up to hang out with you guys, you know, in, in, in your town, like, I, I know, like, I never got a chance to actually play with you, Rhino. I know, like, you'll come over, you'll hang out, and you'll say how you got... Uh, you were excited to play Pendulums, you were excited to play uh, a couple of decks, and I think it just, I never got a chance to play you, which is which is unfortunate. And uh, I think I played you one time, Mike, and it wasn't even my deck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you gave me a deck. I think I played Noble Knights and you played something else. Really? I don't remember <laughs> yeah. that. Just I mean, it sounds time, like. I, it's, I mean, it, 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 if, if it was if it was Noble Knights, that sounds like something I would give you definitely. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to think, like, man, what could I have? Yeah, ne next time, once once the once the crush card you know ends and whatnot, we'll definitely have to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah, I picked up like all the stuff I need for Pendulums. It's essentially my favorite card in Dimian. So I got the Magician Souls now. I got. Literally everything I need. Oh I'm wait, you got you, magician. Oh, that's the you got magician souls, really? Is that? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh man. I broke down and got them because <laughs> if I'm gonna play competitively, like I got my imperms, I got my Nibiru's. I've been collecting everything out of dual overload essentially to get the yeah. zombies together and and uh, come back into the game because. Honestly, as, as, as expensive as it is to play, like, for the best cards and whatnot, I, I still think Yu-Gi-Oh!, like, for just getting three structure decks of a Shadal structure deck, yeah, you know, you, you, can, you, can, you can hang in there on a local level, you know? 
Um, I, I would agree. I mean, it, what's funny, that was going to be one of my topics about, like, or one of the good, like, starting points for this topic is, like, people who want to get into this game, and, like, maybe, like, yeah, they may pick up, like, three of the most recent structure deck. I mean, I guess, what would the most recent, well, now the Machina one came out. I'm, I'm not even sure how yeah. good, I'm not even sure how good that is. But, like, for example, a lot of people, yeah, they would get into the game, buy three structure decks, and then maybe a few other little cards that they might need. But I'm just thinking, like, I wonder if, like, people who are getting into the game now, do you think that they're, like, afraid of spending too much money? Because I know um, one of the people at my locals, um, he's on the Looking for Games chat, uh, Charles. I don't know if uh, Chris introduced you, at, at uh, Kyle, to him at the very least, or talked to him, whatever. But anyway, I know, like, about last year, he got back in the game and wanted to play Heroes, like many Yu-Gi-Oh players want, want to do. And, uh... But he slowly got out of the hero, like, phase and wanted to start playing other things. He wanted to start, like, you know, um, just playing newer decks. And he, before I knew it, he was saying how much money he was spending on the game. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, he, this guy is just going, he's going all in. He's just, you know, he wants he wants the good staples. He wants the good extra deck stuff. He wants the good hand traps and everything. He, he and I, I think he ended up spending a lot of money. And, you know, because he wants to. He wants to play. He wants to have a decent deck to play. He doesn't want to be playing anything archaic you know yeah mm-hmm. i think i think it depends on your situation ultimately but uh you know i think three structure decks come to mind like within mm-hmm. recent years where you can pick them up and i think at a very low budget you can jump in um most recent obviously the should all structure deck which came out in uh in february and that just has like a, a massive amount of staples Super poly. It, it seems like that came and, out so recently and, yeah yeah um and then the other ones that come to mind uh, are definitely Salaman great. Uh, they're still like pretty relevant. You get Ash Blossom in there, and then the Dinosaur Structure Deck. Um, I wanted to mention that as well, even though it's old. It's actually getting an unlimited rerun, uh, supposedly this month. I'm not sure if that's getting uh, pushed back at all. I wouldn't be surprised, uh, given the the crush cards out. But the Dinosaur getting an unlimited print run. I, the deck's still insane. Mm-hmm. Um, Ultimate Conductor is still, like, one of the best boss monsters in the game. I agree with that. And, you know, picking up any of those structure decks at three, I think, you know, on a pretty low budget, um, just grabbing a couple extra deck cards or main deck staples or, uh, you know, hand traps, I, I think it could go a long way. Um, I don't know if there's any others that come to mind for you guys, but those those three definitely hit home for me. No, uh, I... The one close to my heart's good old Endymion. Uh, big, big Daddy. Yeah, I was about to chime in and say, like, definitely... Uh... Oh, Tom's in the chat. Sorry. Hey, um, uh, but yeah, like, uh, the, the the Pendulum Structure deck, the Endymion one, definitely has seen a lot of play recently. You know, it's... Uh, For sure. That's true as well. Yeah. I mean, granted, it's, it's more like people... I, it's sad. I don't think people are playing Endymion. They're just playing Pendulums, and they're throwing in a few of those Pendulum cards, you know, that, just because they're, they're good. I mean, so. you pick up the Structure deck, you grab, uh, you know, some... You grab the drawn Lockwards, and you throw the rest out. You know, no. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I think I think if you get Celine and um, I'm trying to think what else, I, Cerberus was reprinted in there, correct? But Jackal was not. No, Cerberus, I don't think was in there. I think no. neither of them were right. Jackal just or the, yeah, just neither the one were in beast there. Package, I guess, a small mythical beast package, and a and Selene. but a lot of those cards got got reprints, which is the one good thing that I will say, like. Being away from Yu-Gi-Oh for however long, like when we stopped PH and then coming back into it where I had literally nothing, um, and looking at it now, like even when Ash came out, and I remember dueling against you and getting ashed and Kraus, you know, <laughs> going cleaning the shelves, getting the getting the ash, and then playing the ash, you know. Yeah. But now there's been 15 prints of Ash. You know, I have every hand trapped. I literally spent 50 cents on Dual Devastator. You know, ultra rare, alternate arts of all the hand traps you could even want. Yeah. So you know, with a little bit, like I, I'd, I'd say for like a hundred bucks, you know, depending on how shiny you want your deck, and you know me, it's got to be all shiny. So it's yeah. gonna be more in that case. But they have printed a lot of cards common now, which is a good thing. Because back in the day, I swear it was not like that. <laughs> No, it wasn't. Like, common reprints were few and far between, like, yeah. maybe, like, even, like, ten years ago, or, like, not even that. I, I remember, like, the very first, this sounds crazy, but, like, the Marek structure deck, that was probably, like, about nine years ago, maybe, that came out, and that had the very first 
common reprint of Mirror Force, and people were going nuts for it. Like, yeah. like people bought that just for the Mirror Force, and it was yeah. that like which I remember, is. Uh, what else I remember that it was the it, what. Man, it was the fairy structure that they had the common judgment. Was yep. it was it the uh Hyperion? Was it that one? No, I think it was the 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 counter fairy one that had the common judgment. Oh no, I'm sorry, you're right. You're right. Calm I'm sorry, I'm I'm thinking Psalm Warning. Yeah, Psalm Judgment Common was Yeah in the like, yeah, the Master Hyperion deck, yeah. First judgment common. That was a big deal. It was, yeah, yeah 'cause every other every other copy was more well, I think judgment was still at one for the longest time when that came out. But like yeah. Even like the I don't know maybe like the super rare copies were just hard to come by. Even now I think they're kind of they're much more affordable. But like, yeah, it's 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 funny like when that happens, you know. Or even more recently, I think there was other like Ash Blossom being a common, you know, was kind of crazy. In the salad structure deck Mm -hmm. that offered like a lot of value just alone. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Tom. There's a lot of there's a lot of diversity. Um, yeah, there. There were, See, there I, I, I feel there like there is a lot of diversity in, the, in Yu-Gi-Oh! now, but the thing I don't like, like just coming back into it from where we were before, where I could play, you know, Redox with old school Endymion mm-hmm. and Wax on Dragon Rulers with something like that, where it was like more of a back and forth. Now, I can play my Endymion deck and I go first. I win the die roll, and then I set up five in the gates, and I say, all right, if you break it, you break it. If you don't, game two. That's, you know? yeah, that's unfortunately, like, just one of those, like, I wouldn't say it's the, it's a format thing. It's more just, like, a phase. Because, obviously, yeah. when you get to a faster stage, it's like, okay, like, let's see, let's see, like, what kind of crazy board can you make turn one? And then, that's basically what the game is currently right now. People, well, I actually, no, that, that's a lie, because now with the... the Eldritch deck, it's kind of that's kind of like a control deck. Yeah, they just, that's true. yeah, but like like I think Ad Emancipators are still doing that. Like turn one, just make a crazy board, and then if you can't break it, okay, then I win. You know, but do you think back yeah. to the topic? Do you think do you think that play style scares away people from getting into the game of Yu Gi Oh? Because Yu Gi Oh, unlike any other, Yu Gi Oh is so unique, and I, I tell people people this all the time. Like Yu Gi Oh is so unique because it is the only card game that is like that lets you do whatever you want on turn one. I think Magic has some ex- does have its examples of like when they can go super crazy and stuff, but uh, um, I'm, no, I'm, I totally agree with that. Like just coming from you know playing Yu Gi Oh and then the little bit of Magic that I've played and just how you know it's played and, and the pacing of it. Yeah, you know having to set up your lands and stuff that feels like me to more like old school Yu Gi Oh and. Honestly, I, I like being able to just combo off and, you know... Yeah, it's fun. It, it, it makes you... The, f- let the opponent, because it, it's like playing... It, it's it's like a strategy, you know? It is. It's kind of like, let's see... Game. Yeah, like, let's see... Let's, like, you put this, this stuff together, let's see what it can do. Like, 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 impress us. And that's not to say you play over the course of, like, a few turns. It's like, okay, let's, let's see what combo you can do. Because everyone loves watching combo videos, especially in Yu-Gi-Oh!, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, it's funny, I, I just wonder, like, when you have people maybe getting into the game, like, maybe coming over from Magic, where it's not, like, a back and forth, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! used to be back and forth, for, you know, for, for the most part, but now it's, like, I just wonder, like, when people can, move, even, though, like, like, I guess the game of Pokemon, like, Pokemon has some really crazy, like, I, I don't really play Pokemon, like, I, well, I don't play Pokemon, but, like, I heard, like, their cards are just obscene, like, all this draw power and stuff, like, they do a lot of crazy stuff, but they, they're still very limited on turn one. On Yu-Gi-Oh, you, as long as your cards say you can keep playing, you can just keep playing. And I, I just wonder if that, like, scares people away from Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, clearly the game's not, like, getting less popular. I mean, like, you know, they're they're breaking records every time there's, like, a YCS or anything. Or even, like, the national events. They're always just... They're yeah, always I just... I definitely think it does scare some people away just because, like, the way you gotta do things. And, and just when you're solitary and against yourself, like... Yeah. Cause that's... Especially, and, and, and something I like to, I don't know if you guys have, I know PH does, I don't know if you have it, Mike, but the, the new Yu-Gi-Oh game that came out, like, if you've never played Yu-Gi-Oh before, and you got that game, it could teach you the mechanics, because, like, the mechanics are a lot. Like, it doesn't take much to learn how to play Magic. Yeah. Just because there's not, like, synchro summoning, exceeds, linking, no. you know... All these different things, you know, if there's a semicolon after the if, you know, like, 
Yeah. So but, many different things. Well, magic. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, magic has keywords. That's like their thing. Like they they they'll introduce like a new mechanic via keywords. I believe that's what they yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like I guess Hearthstone is also another another you know not card the electronic card game where they introduce new keywords and then that introduces new mechanics yeah. and stuff. You know, but yep. and their new mechanics are all some new mechanics. It's all like okay, like here's a new car, here's a new extra deck card. You know, or. Yeah, uh, but- it's kind of sad, because it's like, though, I can pick up a card in Magic, I can read it, I'd be like, okay, what does this keyword do? You tell me what the keyword does, I know what the card does. Like, mm-hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh, I gotta read it, okay, can I activate this here, what's cost? Like, you know, there, there's just there's just so much to a card. Yeah. Um, and, and, and game knowledge is just everything in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, I, yeah. I agree, I, I believe more than it is. Yeah, any other card. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of... Like, yeah, like, Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of, like, rules and exceptions to the rules. And that's kind of where, like, can, well, can I activate this now? It's like, no, oh, no, you can't. And it's like, oh, well, why not? And, like, that knowledge puts you... Stacking. Yeah. Chain versus stacking. Like... Yeah. Like, it's funny. I I don't know magic, but I hear, like, stacking is, like, their form of chaining. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, but it's, I, I hear it's way different than, like... It's very different. It's see. very different. Because when you when you stack, the card will resolve in the stack. It's, it's like the old, uh, you know... I summoned Stardust Dragon. Now I can negate, you know, mm-hmm. with Stardust because it came out. No, you can't because it technically didn't come out yet. It's like, oh, like, okay. Yeah. Well, and that comes down again, and, and that and that comes out to Yu Gi Oh, where Yu Gi Oh, and like, there's so many little things like, like, was the summon successful? Okay, upon the summon of a monster, like all these little like, like yeah. moments and game states are just, and that's why again, like, the game is so unique and like, I guess in a way complicated for some people, you know, like. Like I, I'm not sure. Like, does does magic have like n- like summon negations, or or is it just like just kill something when it when it comes to the field? It, it's just it's just kill something. Okay. Yeah, it's just kill something. Okay. I yeah. don't think I've ever seen a card in magic just negate. Looking at and and you know I've I, I've only played it a handful of times. I've watched more magic videos than I've actually played it. Mm-hmm. You know, just like being interested in it and seeing, like, how it is different than Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, my heart's always going to lie with the Yu-Gi-Oh's because it's the heart of the cards, you know? It's, <laughs> yeah, Magic doesn't about, have that. Yeah, for sure. It's yu gi man. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's definitely intimidating for people, that's for sure. Like yeah. a Big Rob. Like, trying to teach Big Rob how to duel. Right, right. <laughs> I feel like Now, like, yeah. you know, if, if, if you have a friend that's, like, trying to come into the game, you know, like, wh- where would you even start? Like, would you go through all the different summoning mechanics that you've missed over the years? Like, I'd Yu-Gi-Oh! literally just like, hand them the new Yu-Gi-Oh! game and say, do the tutorial. The, the tutorial? Like, I, I agree. <laughs> I, like, for a $40 paywall, and I think you can get it shipped to you for cheaper <laughs> off of Amazon, and you get the promo yeah. cards, which actually do cover a good chunk change of the game's value. Um, but yeah, the, the new game, the update that came out in March, was, is really friendly. That's the of, uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, Rhino. You mentioned this. You, you, oh, do you mean the one that came out for the Switch? Like the yeah, it's uh, on the Xbox now as well. But okay, it, it, it it's helped me a lot with like learning some of the new cards and like how my deck functions mm-hmm. with other cards and when I can activate things, when I can chain. You know mm-hmm. what exactly is going to resolve if I do this here and you know and and it's really friendly for somebody who doesn't know for somebody like me or you. Who's been playing the game for a long time? You don't need the tutorial to teach you how to link summon. But yeah. for somebody that doesn't know, it clearly show you every little mechanic that you have. And then if you can activate a card, it's going to consistently ask you, "Okay, do you want to activate this card? They did something. Do you want to respond to this card?" Yeah, I remember. Uh, It'll give you those options. Yeah, that's what the old game. I think even the modern um, dev pro does that, right? Because yep. yep. it's, it's constantly saying like, "Do you want to do something? Do this now?" Because now it's telling you you can do this now. I think that is a good way to teach people. Yeah, yeah. Especially for somebody that doesn't know exactly what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Now, is the game available? And I know it's on Switch and Xbox and PlayStation. Is it available on Steam? Can you get it on computer? I have no I idea. I thought you could. I thought I heard something that you could, but I, I could I know be wrong. that the cards only come with the Switch one. You can't go buy a physical hard copy of the game for PlayStation or Xbox, is what my understanding is. Um, and it's a shame because, like that, like I said, that one card microcoder that is being played in Sal Mangre, I think is a fifteen to twenty dollar card. So it's kind yeah. of a nice little uh, recoup on your initial investment sort of deal. Um, 
But yeah, pretty pretty good game overall. Um, I think the fact that they updated the game at the end of uh, March with basically all the cards through current at that point in time. So it did include include Dual Devastator. Uh, it does include the new Master Rule, which is huge. Um, and I think that has a lot of hope with, you know, maybe people like, uh, you know, looking back into the game uh, or, you know, giving it another another shake, I guess. Yeah. Tom just, yeah, Tom. I, with how links panned out. Yeah. Tom just confirmed it. It is, it is on Steam, actually. $40. 40 bucks on Steam as well? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So you can get it. You can play it in, yeah. in any situation. Yeah. Uh, no matter what you have. I was gonna say I think it's better for some people to just come to like a local game again, like not right now, but come to a local game stop game shop and just watch people play. If you, and if you have questions, ask. You know, and then I mean, like, yeah, like we're not all bad people. You know, I'm sure we'll sit down and explain the yeah. game to you. Now, that's even funnier because I, I was the next thing I want to talk about is not so much people who are brand new, but that, that's always gonna be a challenge bringing someone into a brand new game now how about people who have been away from the game for so long and they're coming back into the game maybe they've been away from like for like the last like two generations of Yu-Gi-Oh! like they have no idea right. what a pendulum monster right. is you know or they don't right. or a link yeah mm-hmm. that's what i was saying like where where would you start like teaching somebody that would you would you tell them to pick up like would you i mean i would point them to this game still like honestly i kind of agree with like rhino's advice but mm-hmm. i think one of the most important things to know is uh more than like pendulums, like links are just such a toolbox of effects that yeah. any deck can utilize. And really, just knowing the hand traps, I think is is like so important as well. Mm-hmm. Like it's such a crucial part of the game. Yeah, I, I feel like hand traps are the are like that's something that I didn't really deal with per se. And then coming back into it, just seeing, you know, everybody has Ash now. Like you, yeah. if you're not playing around Ash. Nibiru, like, yeah. you know, you have to. Yeah. It, it, like, if, it, if you don't, you're, you just can straight up lose, like, on yeah. that turn. <laughs> Well, I think that's probably the biggest thing that people are probably unaware of, and maybe you won't see this in Legacy of the Duelist, but this is only only what you're going to see against competent players is, <clears throat> excuse me, like, back in, I would say even since the Synchro era, um, hand traps were still relatively new. I mean, like, like they, they existed. The hand traps did exist, but like they were few and far between. I remember when it was uh, it was uh, Valor. When, uh, yeah, yeah, when effect. See, when I see when I got back into the game, yeah. when I got back in the game, Duelist Rev was out. That was like the newest set, and it was the hottest thing ever. And yeah, effect Valor was that was that was it. That was like it was like the god card. Like oh my gosh, this card was so insane for what it could do. I mean, I think before that, the only other card that could do what it did was, like, the Heralds. The Heralds are, like, orange, and right, right. and e- even that was, like, still... I mean, granted, they were, they were fairies only, so... Yep. Yeah, a generic hand like, effect for was insane. DD Crow was around for a while, but even that was, like, you know... Well, decks weren't ver- as graveyard-centric. Yeah, like, it was, like, a side deck card, maybe. But then when effect for came out, it was, like, if, if, if it's like you play it in every single deck. You know, it was just... Yeah, but, it's pretty strong. But that being said... That was really the only real example of a card that lets you interact on the opponent's turn on their turn one. I think I think that's the biggest thing is now there like the number of hand traps have you know the number has increased so much that like there are so many different hand traps for every single kind of format play style against an, another deck like a matchup and there's some that are just generically good like effect uh, like uh well yeah like effect or, or ash blossom ash blossom is so generic and then uh. You even have. Yeah, you're you're so right about it. Yeah, yeah Imperm, which is a it's a hand trap trap. Yeah, it, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Imperm's a hand trap. Gamma. Yeah. Oh, I love Gamma. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gamma like is so good. Yeah. I think really going through those because you know the game the game really is it's like build a board break a board. I mean mm-hmm. this, this is this is literally the game. Yeah. You know? Unfortunately, this is the game of Yu Gi Oh. Yeah. This is how it is in 2020. That's how it's been for a bit. So yeah. it's like there are you know, yeah there are those there are those moments where like in like right now like Eldritch is a really good deck and it seems like it can play more controlly. It can break boards, but it's like I don't really know what they do. To, again, maybe uh, I'm sure maybe maybe Kyle uh, yeah, PSU, you you probably know because like they do the invoked engine, so maybe that can do like a turn one play. But majority of the time, they're just it's like a, a control game, and it's a control deck that will OTK you like you know. Potentially yeah. the next turn, you know, but yeah, I mean, I mean, they're they're essentially building a board still. Like if they're running Zombie World with Doom King or 
you know, um, they're running. They have a counter trap that essentially negates anything. Yeah. Um, that they can search. Uh, there, and I think of- I think something that I, that I've noticed is <clears throat> there's just as with everything, there, there's the power creep that comes up. Like you, even though it is great, like this build a board format that you have. There's still the card Dark Ruler No More, which literally mm-hmm. says you lose. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the like, thing. Like, I feel you like know, you respond, or it's over. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think people have to. Like, these cards. It's yeah. funny because people complain saying they that have they, to exist. Well, it's funny because people complain saying there's too many hand traps in the game, and I'm like, I get it, but like, let's say they don't exist. The mm-hmm. decks now, decks now will just go wombo combo turn one, and it's like, well, then is is that really fair for the person going going second? Like, he really can't do anything to... I mean, I know it sounds dumb to interact on the opponent's turn. Like, I know there are certain things, like, Magic ha- Magic has instance. Yeah, like, these things exist in other games, but I feel like people have to understand, like, these these hand jobs are obnoxious when they're used against you, yes, but they exist because they are a necessary evil, you know? Unfortunately, uh, yes. And even Dark Dark Ruler No More. Dark Ruler No More is, oh, look, here's a board that li- literally cannot be broken. This card can break it, you know? It's just... Right. Yeah. yeah. And just, just to, like... Uh... Um, reflect on that too uh, there were a lot of online tournaments held last week and mm-hmm. I'm telling you 90 to 95% of the decks had three main deck dark ruler no more and main I don't know deck, if that's well. a sign of a very unhealthy format but uh, I think it's certainly uh, you know <laughs> something to consider you know it's like our board's that strong that you need to run three dark ruler no more it should all, should all like almost phased out because of that like a turn one window just isn't enough. Like it's not. Not yeah, anymore. It's funny how that like went from everybody was talking should all should all should all and now I don't even hear anything about it. You yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> I maybe I was out of the game for a while. I was out of the game since the uh, the quarantine started for sure. Like, but yeah, people are saying like the decks just gets like stomped on by the the Elwich Invoke deck. It's, like that's yeah. just the better fusion deck, which is kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I think it's because, like, for example, let's say they have, the opponent has a window, they would just, like, I, I hear so much about this, the the uh, Eldritch Golden Lord guy. It's like, oh, there's a window, he outs anything. Like, that's, and that's kind of crazy, you know? Like, it's, I mean, and strong cards need to exist, I think. Like, it's good for strong cards to exist, but, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you think that, but do you think, like, having someone get back into the game, like, it, it, actually, kind of like what I was, uh, I was, I was going to mention this, like, so let's say someone... They left when synchros were around, so they thought like, and at the time synchros were the coolest thing, and they were, they they were the uh, the cat's meow. You can say like everyone loves synchros. Every deck played synchros, unless you're playing heroes. But like, you know, besides that, or or, or, or gladiator beast, I guess at the time. But like, so then if you, they if they leave the game for for many reasons or whatever, and then they come back in the game and they see, look, these cards are orange and green like what it's a, it's also a spell card and then you see the the link monsters like do you think that's also intimidating like and i'm not even just saying the fact that the game has evolved to, to the point where the hand traps are everywhere and like cards like dark ruler no more and uh um what's that uh nibiru exists but like, do you think just like the new summoning mechanics themselves are intimidating enough to people to make people say like this is, this is just I, not fun I think, anymore I, th- I definitely think they are but at the same time, once you get the hang of them, I love the lick mechanic. Like, yeah, it's, it's so, really it's really easy. It, it's it, a thing. Yeah, it's so easy to understand. It, yeah, it, and the, the the generic toolbox of it is just yeah. so good. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I, like the nightmares and any of that. It is generic. You know? yeah. I think pendulums are still like one of the most confusing. I think it's still by far the most confusing like mechanic. I, I would say it definitely is the most. But yeah, I, I would agree. That's probably the, the like I I remember when, when Pendulum first came out, and eventually you, you pick up on it. I'm like, oh, this isn't so bad. But I would say compared to like anything else, like it is definitely the most complicated. I would say Synchros are probably like the, the next one. Like Synchros are fun, and then they're but like they are because then it's, it literally involves math, you know? Like oh, this, right. but then like I remember when X Y Zs came out. And I, I, I remember people were saying how these were not going to be good and Synchros were still going to dominate the game. And for like, maybe the, like, for the first couple sets they did until Dino Rabbit came, became a thing, then, you know, Exceeds just got better, just more better generic Exceeds. But I realized these things are literally just get two monsters at the same level. Like, that's that's so easy. Any deck can do it. Like, because back cause with Synchros, 
not every deck can play a synchro because you have to have a tuner monster. So that was kind of like that little like puzzle piece right. of it. Every, and, everything's getting more generic as as the you know the state of the game. Goes yeah. On. But I think the best thing that they did that they have done Konami's done is this whole new master rule um, was a very positive for the game in my opinion, and no introduction of a new card type is also really positive because I, yeah, there's I agree. so much to learn already for a new player mm -hmm. and to just come up with a new mechanic every three years and just throw it into the game and yeah. mass print cards i think this has like a lot of uh a lot of potential for older decks to come back i think they could tap into a lot of the older decks they haven't touched uh, yeah. throughout the link era maybe um provide them some more support uh you know the whole new rule with Synchro succeeds, and Fusion's not having to go to the extra monster zone. Mm -hmm. They don't have to go to a link marker. Uh, that's, you know. I'm still open, thrilled open about that. New gate, uh, for, for some decks. And, and with that being said, you know, the format is so open right now since we haven't had a ban list yet. Um, you know, anything's possible. I mean, obviously, there are some decks that are, that are performing better than others. Um, I think the whole, like, Secret Slayer just coming out and having two top tier decks in. A hidden arsenal esque, like what do they call it? Deck build pack, I guess. Is yeah. The technical name. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's pretty crazy. I can't really think of a time when two top tier decks came out of the same deck build build pack. Like, has that ever happened? I don't think so. I mean, there's been. I'm trying to think. Like, like when Necro, like when the Necros set came out, and like let, let's be honest, uh, Ritual Beasts. Well, actually, were actually, they they were a very good deck, but Necros sure. were like tier zero. You example. know. That's a good example. I forgot about the Ritual Beast. Yeah, they actually were. They, they were a good deck. They were. I mean, but then like I guess it, let's go back to the Sky Striker. Stri yeah, was, uh, that was it. it was, was just awesome. Sky Strikers. Like everything else, it was like the for hires Sky Strikers. I remember what the other one was. Oh, the zombie stuff. Like it was. Yeah. It was just like it was all about Sky Strikers, and then. Uh, yeah. And the past few just haven't been enough. Like the Six Sam stuff came through. The the Nef Nefis Netifus, whatever how you pronounce that. Uh, you know, even even the dragon maids and the generators, like they haven't really done a whole hell of a lot. You know, it's like the past no. like two years of deck building packs. I just the first thing that comes to mind is Sky Striker, and they, you know, dominated yeah. for the longest time, but never have there been like two in the same pack yeah. since since Ritual Beast. I'd say that's that's a good point. Ritual Beast were pretty. Uh, they were there. They were there. Yeah, they, they showed up. Yeah, yeah. Tom. Uh, actually, Tom just mentioned it in the chat. Hidden Arsenal oh. Seven. That's actually a good point. Hidden Arsenal Seven had Constellers and. Uh, and uh, Evil Swarm, that was actually... Evil Swarm, yeah, that's a good one, too. That's another good, good one, too. yeah. But they're few and far between. The they are, stuff. they are. Sometimes, like, one, sometimes one will come out and they're, it's just butt. Like, the one that had uh, Prank Kids. Like, Prank yeah, Kids, uh, Prank Kids had, like, some time in the spotlight, but, like, that was a very, very bad set. Like, and, like, no one really wanted it, you know, because none of the archetypes that came out in that were, like, really good, so... Yeah. But, yeah. But as a whole, I mean, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, opportunities to get back into the game, you know, whether it's uh, you know picking up the Switch game or mm -hmm. just going to your locals once the the um, crush card <laughs> once the crush card is yeah. uh, finished resolving, um, you know. But I was actually going to uh, follow up with what you were talking about regarding. Um... Oh crap! I just lost, lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Um, oh, about uh how this new generation of Yu-Gi-Oh! is coming out, and they're not introducing a new mechanic. One thing I do like is that, kind of like what you're saying, how they could bring back older decks. And we are kind of seeing that, because, like, the the cover card for the next set is a brand new version of Guy the Dragon Champion. And it's like, I think I think it's cool that they're... I mean, they've done it plenty of times over the last couple... Like, I think ever since the Pendulum era, with, like, the... Like, they, they gave Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, Buster Blader... They gave them all, like, revamps or... Uh, Legacy yeah. support. They gave them all legacy support. I, I love that. So I think it's kind of cool that, yeah, I agree, like, this whole next generation won't... And here's, here's a whole new, a different colored card to somehow cram into your extra deck. But it's more like, here, let's just build upon what we have and right. give old old decks and old play styles some new meaning, some new life. And I think that that's exciting, you know? Cause, especially when they even just bring out new... Like, not even like, oh, let's make a synchro monster for... Heroes, and they'd be just be like, no, let's just here. Let, here's just more, more Insector cards, you know, just to have fun with that. And that's just my little, my little wish from Konami to have more Insector cards. But uh, yeah, I, I'd my wish list is X Sabers. I'd like to see uh, 
X Sabres get a little love. They didn't get anything in the link format. I thought for sure they were going to get a link, but yeah, you're right. They didn't get a link. That's MX so Saber Invoker was too generic, and that's the last thing they got. Invoker, <laughs> yeah. It was a little too generic. And very bad in X Sabres. That's the worst part. Like, <laughs> yeah. And very bad in, in its own deck. Yeah. He was better in the Dolce's in his own deck. It's funny. Yeah. Huh. Zoo and everything else. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I remember I picked up, like, a bunch for, like, 10 bucks. Because I, I, and I sold. I think I was only able to pick up four. And then when they went to, like, $70, that was a nice little bit of free money. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so uh, let me check our list again. I'm sorry. I'm very unprofessional. Uh, um, next I'm part. Un- unless you guys... Hey, be quiet. Um, <laughs> unless you guys have anything else you want to uh, chime in about regarding, like, people coming back into the game. Rhino, do you have no, anything I, else? I, I, do, I do like how they, you mentioned how they gave, like, the support to the, more of the legacy decks. Because that's... That's something that kind of got me back into into the game. Mm-hmm. Dark Magician getting all the reprints in that. I, I think it was 2017 Mega Ten, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it was exciting. Like it's just card. It was fun just to play the Dark Magician, and then you know, then they come out with the the newest pack where Magician Souls came, and I was all oh, that, excited yeah. for that card. Yeah. And what? then Konami does the, the typical short print on a Thulis pack. Well, that, don't and... worry. That, that's going to be our next topic. But uh, I do yeah. I do, I do, do want to chime in and say, yeah, I do like how the Duelist packs are mainly doing that. They're, they're, it, it's usually all legacy support, and I think that's cool. You know, like, Harp, I mean, gosh, like what? Harpies, the Destiny board, like, I mean, I, uh, Dark Magicians... Uh, more hero stuff came out in the last one. Like there's all there's all uh, trains, which is random, but like yeah, all these the the last like so, like so many duels packs. Oh yeah, and then there was the one with like, the with the uh, the uh, the Weevil Underworld support, the Insect support, and the uh, Millennium Eyes support, Cyber Dark support. All these legacy decks or the duels packs are great. I think they're just and, and they're fun to see. Cool, like what old. A deck that we love, a deck from the show, like what is going to be revamped, and I think that's just really cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, the next thing I wanted to talk about, and that's kind of piggybacking off what Rhino just said regarding short prints, is the current state of Konami and their sealed product, like how they are releasing the new sets. And, uh,. I know. I guess if you, if you want to, we can start off right now with short prints. Yeah, I mean, apparently they're not short, short printing anything in the core set anymore. That's what they said. I mean, uh, apparently it holds true with the Eternity Code release, but the thing to be mindful is they just up the rarity or the amount of each rarity. So yeah, you're still getting two or three of each copy, but instead of getting like six or seven of one card and one of the other, you're getting basically two or three mm-hmm. of each secret error if we're, if we're specifically talking about that. So even if you go and shell for a case, you're still not guaranteed your play set. Yeah. And uh, you're going to have more of a plethora of cards than seven of one card now. Well, I think so, that's better in most cases. Cause, I mean, I remember like Dark Neostorm was a really good example of where we, we, where we really did not get a lot of... Uh, I remember in my case, I got one new material... Then I'm, I wanted to shake my head, like, really? Yeah. I mean, I, I know in my case I didn't get a Vertar at all. I mean, yeah. there was, like, and then I got, you know, a bunch of other cards. But, but yeah, no, not here there, nor there. But it, it was kind of interesting. And then, and then on the flip side of the coin, you look at the dual sets, which have short prints still. Um, you know, see Magician Souls, yeah. see... And they're even you know, worse. They, they're worse in some cases than the, uh, the core right. sets. Like, right. or, or you look at the, the deck building set, you know, you look at the Eldritch, you look at the uh, Animats. Yeah, them too, yeah. It's... So, I don't know, I, I think it's pretty frustrating for Konami to come out and say, oh, we don't, we're not doing short prints anymore, and then they have, like, the small fine print asterisk, and then they say, but, but that's only in core sets and not in everything else that we're printing. Yeah. I feel like they need to keep it consistent. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fine with there being, like, like, obviously, like, it's not like if you, oh, like, you bought a box of a new set cool, you're going to get every single card in the one box. Like, I, I understand, like, every card game does that. Even, like, again, like, take Magic, for example. If you buy the box of the latest set, you're not going to pull every Mythic. It's just, that's not how it is, you know? 
you might pull four, and I'm not even sure how, how many mythics are usually in a set. Like, what, 12 usually? 12 in a set? That sounds right. Yeah. yeah, so let's say you pull four in a box. It's like, you know, buy three boxes, maybe you'll get all 12, like all 12, one copy of all 12, you know? Yeah. And in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's like, but it usually, on average, if you buy a case, you should get... It's just funny where, like, if you buy a case, there's a chance you won't get even one copy of one secret rare. And usually, it's the one that's the best in the set. Like, take Lightning Storm, for example. I think they're having people who didn't get any in, in an entire case, and that's like, well, that just ruins the value of your case. You know? Like, it just ruins it. Yeah. Um, uh, gosh, back to the, the, the deck builders... I remember the one of the worst short prints. I mean, right now we're seeing that with like the El- the Eldritch guy. But I remember when the Necroz uh, one came out, uh, the Secret Forces. Like people would like. I think it was maybe like one Brianak in a case, and if you like, and that was like if you were lucky. Like it was, it was like it was like something insane. Like like some cases didn't have a Brianak, and it kind of makes you wonder why they weren't more expensive than. I mean, they were expensive, but I'm surprised they weren't more than what they really are, because like. Or actually, no. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm exaggerating. Maybe it was like two per case, but that's still pretty bad for a. Uh... Yeah, that's that's basically what the Eldritch dude is right now, and the uh, the Emancipator Searcher. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. They're like they're like two per case. Like that's so case, that's like so that. bad. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's uh... yeah. Classic Konami. Yeah, and then... the short print and everything. Yeah, I mean, well, g- not in the core sets anymore. Well, he supposedly, yeah, and again, I, I mean, I, it sounds like people have tested this theory. They bought cases and they've, right. yeah, again, like that doesn't doesn't mean like you buy five boxes. Oh, look at that! I only I only got one, um, what I don't know. I I got one of the archer sword, the dinosaur guy, and I but I got yeah. three of the cover card. This is like no, it's like, I guess you you have to take it as like an average of for every case. Like on average, so obviously there's still going to be some. There's going to be nuances, but yeah, you have to say on average you're you're guaranteed to get at least one of everything, and I guess that's that's still holding true. I mean, there, again, there might be some rare exceptions, but as long as there, as long as as it's, it's like a rare exception, then I think Konami is holding true to that statement. You know, right? I mean, unfortunately, right now we're in a place where uh, our sample size is only based upon Europe, and there there is no English distribution yet mm-hmm. in North America, so um, we're assuming it's true. Probably is, but I was just, I guess, a little bit disappointed that they didn't up the ratios in each case. I was expecting maybe a third secret rare per box to accommodate for them bumping the secrets from ten to fourteen or something along those lines. But uh, but either way, I mean, the value of each card should be higher technically with rares removed, and. Uh, you know, overall, probably good for the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Possibly could lead to a more expensive game, which I think we're going to hit on that a little bit later as well, with the cost of the game itself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, uh, also, when it comes to... What do you guys think about the... Uh, oh, gosh, what was I going to say? About just, like, the, the prices in general regarding, like, short prints. Like, do you think it's cool that, like, if you want to play a deck that you guys like, you're, you have to accept the fact that you're probably going to be spending, like, about several hundred dollars to get, like, I mean, I mean, like, core pieces for a deck. Like, not, like, the fanciest high rarities for extra decks, the best staples. That That's a whole other thing, because you'll be spending a lot of money for the staples. But, like, I mean, like, to, I guess take Magician's Soul, for example. Yeah, do you think it's... That, for me... Like Magician Souls, when when that came out, PH can attest. I was I was so excited to see that card and mm-hmm. actually like have the Dark Magicians be playable. And then he called me. He's like, "Oh, it's a short printed card, and uh, <laughs> it's gonna be the the hardest card to get in the set. It's pre ordering at a hundred dollars." And I'm just like, "Well, yeah. there goes that because I'm not like." It, and honestly, then, Magician Souls is a great color for Dark Magician, but it doesn't make Dark Magician tier one. No, it actually is a very good, but it, it is good for that deck. It, it does make them better. But it like, is. It makes it much better, but it, it's better in an Eldritch deck, you know? And yep. It's better in... It's, it's, it's better, better in Spiral in, in or whatever. Endymion deck, you know? Yeah. And the only reason I picked it up is for the Endymion deck, like, mm-hmm. to actually make it full power, you yeah. know? Like, just having that ability... 
to recycle and the genericness of it. Yeah, but it's just crazy. I mean, because it's funny. I was brainstorming an idea for Monarchs, and I realized, wow, uh, Magician's Soul is insane in Monarchs. Because it, 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 you can discard the spell to draw. It can send... Uh, there actually is a, like a Monarch spell cast or whatever. Like It's kind of crazy to think, like... But I'm never going to... I'm, I'm not going to pick it up. It's not worth it. I'm not spending three hundred dollars or no more than that like they get the cards like i think went up i think it went up again it's like three hundred dollars and it's uh and it's like i i'm not playing that for like like for my fun deck you know but there and there are people who are passionate about dark magician that want to play they, like i want to play dark magician i have to get this card to make it even relatively playable or even fun for me and then you know the end up you know committing a, a maybe a little too much money into the game especially if they're not a competitive player. That's the. I think that's the worst part. Is when it's like for the casual market. I mean, it is what it is. But the casual market really takes it, it takes a hit by this because, like you know, and, they're they're going to be spending more money than the they want thing, to. Like what ultimately led to me deciding whether or not to get the souls is PHS asked me who like, what are you going to do with it? Are mm -hmm. you going to play? Can, if you're going to go and play, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Like if you're actually, and I want to like go to regionals with you guys. Like I've never actually gotten to go to one, so like I really want to like test it out. And like if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. You yeah. Know? So I pick up the souls. But right. like other than other than that, like picking up and and something that I, I I've really accredited a lot to some of the stuff that I have now mm -hmm. is, you know, PH and I will be looking at these market watches when they come out. Like how much, how much did we get the Boral, the Boral Load Savage? We picked it up for like 20 bucks, right? PH, it was like $20, $15. Yeah. I got rid of those. I got rid of those. And now it's 70 bucks. I know. You know? That's, that's, <laughs> It's crazy. I remember I had like I pull. I remember I pulled two of those at my at the sneak peek, and I was like, oh well, at least I pulled. And they were going for about twenty dollars at the sneak peek, you know. And that was like sneak peek hype. And I'm like, oh well, at least I pulled like the best ultra in the set. And I'm like, oh, if only I would have known just to just to hold on to those th those things because they're going to be so expensive. Like, yeah, and and it goes for like everything, like the dual dual. Uh... Uh, what's Dual Overload that just came out? Like yeah. I picked up my Imperms when they were eighteen a piece. Yeah. Now they're thirty. You know, and yeah. I, I just got them. You know, like two weeks after set release, when it's flooded on the market. Yeah. You know, I picked up my Verte Anaconda for fourteen dollars. Uh, that's, that's, that's a good. That's a good price. Yeah, I mean that, and people do take advantage of that pre-sale, like the pre-sale mm -hmm. prices and stuff. Like, because you're kind of taking a gamble. Sometimes, like, there's cards that are super hyped up and they're they're super expensive. Um. I remember in the uh, the Dragon Maid um, pack, uh, I guess that's an, another example of a pack that didn't have anything good in it, but, like, there was the Math Mechs, and there was a Rank 4 Math Mech that was going for, like, 120 bucks pre-sale. Because, again, it was short-printed, but, like... Short but then, but then of course, it was, like, no one plays it. Like, absolutely no one plays it, and the card plummeted in price. Like, so I wonder if those people are con considering jumping off, a, jumping off a bridge because they, like, maybe pre-sale and paid like $80 a card mm -hmm. and then thinking cool it'll go to 120 which it did and I'll sell them and make money and it's like nope it went down to like I don't even know how much they are now they're, they're, but they're not what they they're not what they, what they were you know yeah. Yeah, a lot of people like to take advantage of pre-sale prices I remember oh my gosh like uh, maybe PH can, uh, can can talk about this when the evil heroes were being announced like uh, the, the uh, malicious bane was announced and adjusted gold and people thought, "Wow, I want these cards." I'm sure you were one of these people, and you pre you pre ordered them for a fair amount of money, and then got for, and then people realized, that, like again, the short prints take into effect, and then the cards like triple in price. You know, that's just one of those moments where like you can really take advantage of that of that. Yeah. And then they're canceling their orders. Yeah, good times. Oh man, that whole that was a mess math when that was happening. Yeah. People were. Uh, canceling and then re-listing the order for a higher price. Oh, man. Yeah. Pretty unfortunate. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, like, short prints are just kind of a ne necessary evil for, for the game to go around, you know, at least yeah. for Konami to, uh, 
make their dough. Yeah, it's ch- yeah, they're, they're chase cars. It's all about that sealed product, and for and for me, like other than if we get like a crazy good deal, like I'm not buying sealed product unless I want to get a Lost Ark promo from the shop. Like I, I strictly buy singles now. It's like, usually and, better to buy singles. It is. Yeah, I hate I saying it, but it is. What I need. What I like, what I want, I'm gonna have, you know, whether whether it be four or five decks, whatever you want to have put together. Yeah. And I've just been focusing on those things and those things alone. You know, even though you're gonna spend a, a little bit more to make it a shiny piece of, you know, Cyber Dragon deck or whatever it might be, it's totally worth it in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like just to to get the cards you want and you know just bite the bullet when the cards come out, depending on, you know, what it is. Because like you said, even with this Eldritch, I remember seeing people talking about the pre-sale of Eldritch. It was like 70 bucks, and they're like, oh, so it's so high, and there's no way it's going to be that, mm-hmm. you know, expensive. And then literally two weeks later, it's $115. Yeah. You know, and everybody who had pre-ordered at 70 looks like a genius. Yeah, know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember people thought that deck was going to be butt. Like, people thought this is just too bad. It was a very bad deck, and then it's, like, best deck in the game. Go figure. <laughs> yeah. like, then again, though, the allure of a pack, though, is pretty strong sometimes, fellas. That's for damn sure. It is true. The allure, crinkle. the allure of the pack is fun. Yep. Oh, yep. Man. All right. Well, I'm uh, introducing, like, the core set changes and... I was saying, oh, well, if they, they had a third Seeker Rare in there, might be worth considering, you know, picking up picking up Sealed, like in some situations, mm-hmm. especially in a good set where Secrets retain value. But it's tough to look at Eternity Code. Like, a lot of people are trying to compare Eternity Code to Dark Neo Storm, like. Yeah. I, I think it, I, I think you can't compare it. Like, people are worried that it's going to have the same effect because Dark Neo Storm, and this is why you and I were so hyped for that set because, like, it had so many good cards and so many good Seeker Rares. And, like, the theory I'm seeing, like, on, like, this, that Zodiac Duelist channel or uh, group whatever is the saying that the, because there's so many good secret rares, that's what causes them all to collapse at some point. Right. They can't all be good. They yeah. can't all be expensive. Right. Versus you look at, like, last set, which is Lightning Storm, and that's, like, it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that yeah. carries a set. Like, that carries it right. ahead, you know? It's right. A ch- right. But I think it's also kind of weird, you know, oh, this set's in a weird place. You, you got the crush card. You have only the distribution in EU, mm-hmm. and you also have a rare, like, the amount of secret rares in the set has changed by four. Yeah. Which is a lot. It's yeah. a lot. I also wanted so, to ask, yeah. There's was, a lot of factors. Yeah, not even that. Like, what do, you guys, what do you guys also think about them removing rares from the set? Like, no more rares. From what I, from what I understand, it's just every, every pack will have at least a super rare now. I mean, before it was a rare and a super rare, now it's just every pack will have a super rare, or you get an ultra rare or secret or the starlight rare, I think. But uh, right. So what do you guys think about rares being on out of the game now? Because obviously it's changing. Where like to fill in those slots, there's more super rares in the set, which means you're not gonna you're not guaranteed to get like if you if you buy a box, odds are you're or I think it's I think it's impossible to get every single super rare because now there's like so right. many. Twenty six of them. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh my gosh. So and uh, and the and the ultras and secret. Yeah. So technically, it's like. There's more variants, and maybe, maybe that's why they decided to cut back on the short prints, and, you know, that's probably a good thing for all of us, but, I mean, it's it's kind of interesting to, like... Oh, you know what? I just realized I misspoke. That's that's correct. I'm sorry. Yeah, just to correct, I'm sure someone in the comments section will correct me probably, like, a couple days from now in this video. There, yeah, there's 26 supers. Okay. 14 ultras, up from 10, and then 10 secrets up from 8. So there's two additional secrets Jeez. in the set. Four additional ultra rares in the set, and then secrets have, or I'm sorry, super rares have been bumped from 14 to 24. Jesus. So that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, cards retain more value. That's really how I look at it. Specifically, the super rares. Uh, yeah, know, which is good because super rares. I mean, maybe they'll be just like the old super rares, where like if you pull a super in a pack, wow, it could be worth money. Now it's like, like there was like. Maybe ever since uh, Breakers of Shadow, when they introduced the new the new rarity oh, yeah. system, where I, there was a super rare minimum in every single pack, like Twin Twizzlers was like an example. Like, wow, it's a good super rare. It's worth like five to ten, I think ten bucks at one point. But like, yeah. Besides that, many super rares were bulk. I mean, you know, and then 
over time, maybe a few would go up in price. But, like, now it's like, okay, cool, maybe the Super Rares, they're not, I mean, some will still be bulk if they're just bad Super Rares, but, I mean, like, now it's consistent. It's harder to get the ones that you want. I agree. Maybe that will help them retain value. Like the Super Rares of old. Now, uh, do you guys miss Ultimate Rares from the sets and Ghost Rares? I personally think that was like a. It was sad to see them go because it kind of give it gives the product more. You, you have more to look forward to in the packs than you have the ultis and the ghosts. Like the like the, the allure of the pack was bigger for uh, ultis and ghosts. Do you, do you guys miss them at all? I, I definitely miss seeing ghost rares. I kind of like how they have ultis and OTS now, though. Like they didn't just like yeah. It's just something that the shop can have, like, and you gotta, you know, go there and play, and it's some of the most, you know, staple cards in the format. Like, I do kind of like how they do that, just as a rarity bump for people who care about that, you know, and yeah, how I, in the card more is. Yeah, I, I can see that. I just feel like... The Ghost like, Rares, though, confuse me, because I always thought they were really pretty-looking cards, you know? Oh, yeah. I think I, I've never actually seen a Starlight rare card in in person yet, so I don't they're, really know what it looks like per se. They're cool. And how shiny it is! But I'll say the they're definitely nicer in person. So cool. They're nicer in person. I'll, I'll say that they're they're nicer in person, but like, um, some of them look bad. Like it's, I mean, I I don't think I ever saw a bad ghost rare, but like these Starlight rares, like some of them, like some of them look really cool in person. Like I think. But one, I, 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 I never saw it in person, but, like, the Water Charmer Link monster looks looks really sick in the uh, Starlight Rare. But yeah. then it's, like, there's the Effect Veiler Starlight Rare, which, oh, that oh that's actually something we'll talk about, too. But, like, that looks, I don't know, I, I haven't seen it in person, so I can't really tell. But to me, it didn't look as nice as, like, the Ultimate Rare Effect Veiler. Yeah, I, I think Starlight Rares uh, definitely add something to the game. Like, it almost feels like the Return of Ghost Rares. I'm a little disappointed that it's not like a guaranteed one per case thing. I think that would have been a lot better and healthier for the game in general. I yeah. mean, already there's a restriction where Starlight Rares can't be in unlimited packs. Um, I think that that's fine, but like I, th- I think they're a little bit too uh, hard to come by, in my opinion. Especially considering, you know, Ghost Rares back in the day, it was one card. Right, Starlight Rares. Yeah. There's four. Yeah, there's cards. so much there's variance. Yep. Four. There's going to be five different cards. Yep. Um, and Ghost Rares. Really like chasing that card, it, it really, uh, you know, it matters big time because like Ghost Rares, I mean, like so, like so far the Starlight Rares are already way more expensive than the Ghost Rares ever were when they first came out. Like, because right. Ghost Rares are, I think they're about like one per case. Like you're usually guaranteed one Ghost Rare per case. Right. And you're right, it was only the one. So now it's like, oh, cool, like, after two, like, what, like, I think it's like one and a half cases, you pulled the Starlight Rare, oh, and it's the bad one. And that's like, oh, that's that's a shame. Yeah. You didn't yeah. pull the Apollosa, you pulled the, uh, you know, the whatever, the Salamangri yeah. one, so. That's why I was like, you know, if it was guaranteed one per case, like, I think that would be okay. I think the fact that it's guaranteed, like, one and a half to two cases, it's just, that's so weird. That's such a random ratio. Yeah. You have four different cards. Like, I like the fact that, you know, I guess moving forward, they're going to take an old card, put a 101th card in the set, and mm-hmm. make it only Starlight Rare. And I think for them to hit Effect Veiler first is a really big sweet spot for some people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, this pack specifically coming out of Eternity Code is really just all the, all the Starlight Rares are waifus. Literally every single one. It's like mm-hmm. crazy. And, uh, you know, they're, they're definitely not done. Konami, Konami knows. Um, yeah, I think, they, I think they knew they start goal with this. I do it, think... It, it, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I guess the other thing, like, I definitely liked Ghost Rares. I, I miss them. I think Starlight Rares coming back kind of fills that gap. But I definitely do miss just pulling an Ultimate Rare unexpectedly in a pack. Mm-hmm. I think that that, and considering they're not as rare, you know what I mean? Like, you were guaranteed, like, an ulti in a box before. Mm-hmm. I think the allure of that um, added a lot to buying sealed products. And with that being removed and only exclusive to the OTS packs, you know, I don't know. I wish they were still there. I think, that, but I think that was like a printing cost uh, issue, and same thing with like the ghost rares. I think they were trying to save on printing. Um, probably one of the reasons it went away. Yeah. It was pretty unexpected. You know, it's pretty out of left field. Yeah, you know, it <laughs> I heard they said it was because it was like too expensive to print them. Like it was too expensive mm-hmm. for the for the technology to make the ghost rares. I'm, I'm not sure how 
truthful that is. Did you know that in Japan they have like multiple rarities? Like, like, like instead of Starlight rares, they still have Ghost rares. They still have Voltis oh. in their sets, and then they have like they, I forget what else they have like some oh, really oh, crazy oh. rarity over there. Mm-hmm. Like it's like I'm jealous that in the OCG they get like so many like alternative rarities for their cards. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what, what I liked about the Ultis. That was like you get the ultra rare, or no, I pulled the ultimate rare version of that. It was like it was kind of it cool. Yeah. I saw one. It was of a hand trap. It was like it was like an ultimate ghost rare or something. I mean, it was like crazy. Like it, mm-hmm. it was like an ultimate gold rare. I think it was yeah, it was all gold, and, but it was ulti. It mm-hmm. was like whole. Yeah, it looks like, it looks it looks nice. Like I mean, I wish we had cooler cards like that. Because I mean, I just like the whole like the way the ultis look. Like I like that extra like foil layer they have on them to give it like some kind of like texture. And I think it's just sad that like you have to look forward to. The tournament packs to get them now. I mean, I, I guess it's fun if you do play in tournaments, but like, for sure. But the tournament packs specifically, they 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 really are just hitting on meta cards and reprints and yeah. like rarity bumps. Whereas uh, the ultimate rares, we're just giving like rarity bumps to the newer cards, mm-hmm. and I don't know. Like, I remember in I think it was was it during no it wasn't during Pendulum. It must have been during the Exceed era. They 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 turned down the amount of. Uh, Ultimate rares. They did. Yep. It used, be, it used to be like every ultra every rare could be or ultra rare could be the ulti. Yep. Uh, That's ulti, what it was. Right. Yep. And then towards the end of their life, there were five ultis per set. Yep. And they were random. Like some of them were like a rare. Super. Some yep. were the super. Yeah. Like it was different. I mean, like, kind of, it's kind. Of, it's kind of like what they're doing with with star rares. How like a rare right. super ultra and secret can be star rare. That's kind of what they were right. doing back then. Yeah. Right. I mean, that would be fine with me, but obviously, I don't think they have any intention. I mean, they're they're once again removing another card type from the pack moving forward, and you know, the rare is gone now. Yeah. So like, clearly, they're trying to cut back on costs. Like, I don't foresee any of that coming in the future, unfortunately. In the foreseeable future, to say the least. But yeah. Yeah. All right. I guess uh, if you guys want me to move on to our last topic, and then we can kind of do like a free for all. But just like, what do you think of the state of the game currently with this whole? Um, crush card virus going around the uh, this health crisis. Like, I mean, because despite the fact that cards are so expensive, and there's such like it, it, not even like not even in the meta and like the modern stuff, the like, vintage cards have been going up in price. Like, it's really insane. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the st- stimulus checks and everything. But like, when it, especially when it comes to modern cards, I it blow like. We were, t- we were we were talking about this earlier before the podcast started. Like, why are people spending all this money on your Eldritch cards? Why are you spending several hundred dollars and you're not actually playing the game? You're just playing like because I think I thought they were really trying to enforce the video dueling. Like I saw some memes on Facebook of people like saying how Konami wants to enforce using a uh, like like a, like a camera to videotape your play mat and that's how you play. And I guess that would enforce you to play with the actual physical cards as opposed to playing the like, dueling book or something. But, like, then we learned, no, like, they were actually hosting tournaments using, using, um, using dueling book. So it's like, why are people spending all this money on, on these cards now? I don't believe any of those are Konami affiliated, though. I mean, that's like PPG it stuff. It was PPG but... and stuff, yeah, yeah. But still, like, but, but people are still, but let's just say, like, they are hosting these tournaments and they're the only ones that are actually going on currently. But it's all it's all electronic. So why are, I, I'm I'm just wondering what you guys think. Why are people spending the money on cards? Like why are you picking up these cards at ridiculous prices and you're not even using them? That, that's that's a really good question for me. You know, just seeing how far some of the cards balloon. Now, like you said, Mike, the, the stimulus check definitely you know helped push me to the edge on the magician souls mm-hmm. but i also had picked them up you know when they're 85 a piece mm-hmm. and ph it was the one who said to like look around because i was on tcg player and you know they're sitting at 95 i go to trolling toad and they got them for 85 mm-hmm. buy it now you know and i just quick scooped them up and and that's that and yeah it was. It seemed like a good spot for me to pull the trigger on if I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. But it really depends on the card as well. Like, yeah. Magician Souls, in my opinion, is an extremely safe investment. Like, it, it, compared to other cards. Yeah. 
what doesn't make sense to me right now is people buying out Madolce Angeli is a perfect example. Madolce Angeli confirmed for Battle of the Legend in like less than two months. Okay, we're not playing. We know we're not playing like 100% in the next two months. Okay, why are you buying Madolce Angeli for $40? That's what I'm yeah. That's, that's, especially, that's what I'm especially when it's guaranteed to be a reprint. You know? Now, the Eldritch stuff, the stuff out of the new set, I, like I do understand to some extent as well. Like I also think that that's a pretty safe investment for the most part. You know, if they're gonna if they're gonna do something directly to the whole Souls engine, they're not they're probably not gonna hit Souls. You know, they're probably gonna hit a very cheap search card, for example, in the Eldritch deck. Yeah. In uh, An Emancipator, they're probably just gonna put Block Dragon to one or zero. Like they're not gonna hit the deck directly. So there are like cards that I think are safe, and I think specifically looking at the Starlight market, the Vintage market. Um, you know, but but it is interesting to say the least with the whole um. You know, the crush card and when everything is going to end and get back to normal, it's like, yes, you're not going to be using these physical cards, but I guess starting in the new calendar year, once once uh, all this pushes through and, and life starts to get back to normal, there could be a big balloon, for, especially for cards that aren't confirmed for reprint in the Megatons or in the Battles of Legend, you know, specifically looking at, like I said, the Secret Slayer stuff, the, the Magician Souls, the Lightning Storms that we know aren't in um you know the megaton you know cards that aren't going to be getting reprinted until 2021 basically yeah uh, you know but why now i guess is the question and yeah why like, now and why not in two months yeah you know? like, that's my thing like i don't know like cause it's like it's not like there's there's no world tournament there's no nationals there's right. not even there's not even local i mean p- p- people can play locals like kind of like what they're doing like you know go on discord right. and play on dual book monitor monitor it that way sure but like I just don't understand why, right now, people were... Basically, why are they playing that risky game of, like, let's see what happens. Like, I think it, it, it could even go to a ban list. Like, hey, well, there's no ban list right now. At least there's one coming up, coming up eventually. What do you think they're going to bring back? What do you think they're going to hit? And because cards are going to get hit, what are the what are the cards that are going to spike in response to that? And people were, you know, playing that game, and it just kind of blows my mind. Like, I just... Yeah, I don't know. I, I... I think it is a really weird spot to be in as well. You know, I mean, there's a lot of factors. You also have the whole like uh, master rule change taking effect April first. Mm-hmm. You have the, you know, <laughs> yeah, you have the crush card. You have all these sets coming out. You have a ban list supposedly June first or any time after. Which yeah, the, the new question thing. still remains: Are they going to do anything? Because everything's canceled through July, which ends the calendar year for Yu-Gi-Oh. Technically, yeah, it's yeah, are they even going to bother. I guess is the question. No, I, I agree. I, to I me, it's like honestly the the master rule might have a little bit, you know, something to do with it. Just people being more hyped to come back and play. Like for me, it definitely, you know, has given me a little bit more life. You know, being able to not have to worry about the link mechanic as much and, you know, making sure I have zones pointing out. Like, it, it just seems, you know... Yeah, I think that was... More more fun and more fair, if that makes any yeah. sense. Oh, no, it does. It's back as well. Yeah, so. yeah for sure. It, it, it brings life into older decks that, like, had no chance unless they got a link monster and they still, had never, and they still never got one. So it's, like, it's kind of cool that... I definitely think the master rule was a, was a, was, a, was definitely a move in the right direction to like get people back in the game, get hyped for their old favorite decks and everything. But I still don't think it justifies some of the prices that we're seeing for this. It's just uh, it blows my mind. And this is and this is not even for like tournament pack cards and like ghost like, like the vintage market. Like the, yeah. but like you see even like just random like random 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 buyouts. Like if you go on YouTube and you look at those market watches, you'll see this the, like the Angel is a good example. There's so many just random buyouts of like random I mean, cards. Yeah. There's definitely things that don't make sense to me. Cards that aren't scheduled for reprint as I mentioned earlier, I'm not surprised. Like people get stimulus money, you know, the first thing you think of is like I mean, this is just sad, but it's like, is rent paid this month? Do I have any expenses to worry about? No? Okay, Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, like... Yeah. <laughs> that's unfortunately, I think, the mindset of, like, some people, but, like, I, I mean, to each of their own. I mean, if, if they had... And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that, but... Yeah, if that's their luck... that there's buyouts in the vintage market, and there's buyouts in cards that aren't going to be reprinted anytime soon. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I, I, took a, I took a gamble, that's for sure. 
Um, you know, I, I picked up extravagances before it was in uh, early February before this whole, um, you know, uh, crush card kind of uh, hit home here in the States. Yeah. And, uh, you know, cause I was looking forward to regionals and, and nationals this year and, uh, worlds actually being in the United States is a possibility to maybe, you know, do some traveling and get involved and, and, you know, improve the, the consistency of my decks. Like, mm-hmm. Travis getting played in every deck and here I'm sitting with them. They're still at the same price I basically paid for them, maybe a little bit higher even. And it's like, they're confirmed for reprint in July. Do we know if the set's being delayed? Do we, I mean, we have no clue. Mm-hmm. But I, I have a sneaky suspicion if I put them online right now, I could probably get rid of them for basically what I paid for them. You know, it's just yeah. it's the reality of the situation. Like, but, uh, yeah, I don't get it. But what yeah, I'm wondering it, is, it, it's know. a it, it's a good question across the board because, like you said, Mike, like it's that's a lot of random stuff too. It's just like the Angelis and like I saw uh, Mecha Phantom Beast O Lion Rare was like fifteen dollars. Yeah, something. I mean, like there's and people are buying. It. Yeah, there's. I mean, like it's funny because like I can't understand a rare that never got reprinted and it's used with. It's used with needle fiber. Like I, like, I get that. That's where, like, it's supply and demand. But then it comes down to, but where, but where, why is there such demand for this when you can't actually, like, you don't need the car physically? That's my <laughs> thing. Like, even the, the, the Angeli example that, that PH brought up is more of, like, why are people buying this when it was confirmed to be reprinted? That's, like... Wait, and, and Mecha Phantom Beast so Lion. That's the other one that gets me. Oh, yeah. oh, oh wait, that was in there, too? Oh, I didn't know that. Mecha Phantom Beast Lion is getting a super rare in Battles of Legend. It's a ten to fifteen dollar rare right now. Like why? Why? Why are they getting bought? Who? Like who's doing that? That's. Well, I mean, people, people, people. Like you know, uh, Rhino was just saying. Like why are people buying it? I think it's because you need it for needle fiber. But it's like, but why are you? But why are you physically playing the game right now? Like, or where are you physically playing the game? <laughs> I, I I love shiny cardboard as much as anybody else. But why are you spending the money on right now? Like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. But my question to everybody is, you know, watching this video, is where would the game be if, if in terms of prices, if uh, the crush card didn't didn't ha- you know didn't hit didn't mm-hmm. resolve, yeah. crush card didn't resolve, you know, how much would a lightning storm be right now? Would it be the know. same price? Would it be more or less? I don't know. The same? Yeah, I remember we talked about this before the the, the stream, and I was thinking yeah. the same. I was, I was I was looking forward to this question because. If there were regionals and YCS, is like if there were actual tournaments to play in, and people had and people had a reason to play to get your invite to go to Nats, like yeah, would people still be spending a hundred dollars on a lightning storm, or would they be eighty dollars by now? And to be honest, I actually do think they would have been down a little bit. Eighty dollars is still a lot of money, but I feel like. There would be a trickle because people would still be outside buying products. Still, there'll still be more product being opened. You know, I think that ultimately comes down to because with the attorney code prices, have, the prices were starting to settle just from like hype and uh, um, pre sales and everything. But like now that the product, has, like because the product's out now. Not many people are really buying it. People are ordering it and like getting it shipped to their house, but it's different compared to. Going out into the store and people ripping ripping open boxes at their locals, you know. I, I I know that might seem like that doesn't happen all the time, but I'm pretty sure it does. There's plenty of people who go out there and buy a product at retail price, rip it open, and it just gives more more cards are put into the market. And I don't think there's as many right now for, for the latest set. So that might also be a factor. Uh, I'm like somewhere in the middle of the road with this, honestly. Um I'm not sure exactly where lightning, like how much lightning storm is being played right now. I think it, I, from what I've been seeing, it's been more of like a dark roller no more sort of deal. Um, so I can't really sit here and talk about lightning storm's price. If it was being played, I think it would be more than what it currently. Personally, because I think I think the set's just kind of out of print at this point. It's not on the shelves as much. Yeah, I do think Secret Slayers would probably be about the same, and the reason why is because there's a lot of supply issues that they're still suffering with. Mm-hmm. Um, was given the situation, so I think more product would be cracked, even though there's short prints that maybe more people would be picking up the deck. I think the Eldritch and the Animancipator cards would probably be around where they're at right now, but I don't know. It's tough to say, and there could be more of a demand. You know, the prices could technically be higher than what they are right now as well. Yeah, it, you know, it's hard to say because you have the new Master Rule, you have the 
you, you're really getting hit with a trifecta of things here. Mm-hmm. You know, between. You see, for, for a cord like Lightning Storm, in my opinion, like that thing's just not going to go anywhere until it gets either reprinted or banned. Right. At, at, at this rate, it's yeah. It's just so good. Like, it's just... Right. It's such a good card. Like, it's always going to be $115. Like, until yeah. something happens. Yeah. Like, Ideally, like, I... Okay, you can't play this anymore. Oh, I agree. Because, like, it's supply and demand right now. And, like, it's like, well, right now there's still a demand for it. Why wouldn't you play this card? Especially because, like, right now, if you're going... Because decks are so... So many decks are good at going first. And it's like, that whole break the board mentality... That's why you, at the very least, if you're not main decking this card, you're siding three of it. Because you mm-hmm. you need to. And yeah, until it gets reprinted or banned, or, or, or not banned, but like, you know, until it maybe gets like limited or semi-limited. Yeah, there's, I, don't, I don't see the card going down in price at all. I mean, clearly, again, the kind, of, kind of going back to what we're talking about, if it, it, it clearly a recession and a pandemic is not enough to stop this card from going down in price. You know, it's which is silly, but it is yeah. what it is. Yeah, but I'm curious to hear what everyone else thinks in terms of the price of meta cards if uh, the crush card didn't resolve. Yeah, <laughs> they were so- yeah. damn, damn Donald Trump. He didn't have a uh, he didn't have a seven tools to stop it. Yeah, no, no wiretap. No wire, wiretap. I missed that card. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's to, to the uh, the listeners out there. You know, yeah, write something, write down in the comments below if you have any. Uh, thoughts and stuff on just the state of the game right now the state of prices and and everything else but uh, that's definitely it for now as, as far as like the topics they had written down but uh uh ph rhino do you guys have anything else you want to talk about man everybody should be uh, subscribing to the collector's vault yeah so subscribe to the collector's vault oh you guys just, i mean so love the mic you yeah. guys are too kind yeah, they- you guys are too you're gonna calm. you're gonna see some great stuff here, and I was looking at some of the uh, one chord Karakuri combos today that Mike had put out, and <laughs> I like that combo. It's good. Yeah, that is pretty good, man. One, dude, it, Karakuris can make calamities now. I'm so happy. A one card <laughs> calamity. <laughs> Yeah. Unbelievable. I, I do want to chime in and say to the listeners out there, if you have not subscribed to Community Gaming V2, go ahead and, and do yourself a favor and do that. There might be there might be some new content coming out here and there. You never know. Yeah, well, but, uh, if, if people start subscribing, it'll give you more of, of an incentive to want to make new content, you know? For sure. For sure. I'll be definitely posting some of my deck profiles and stuff. Well, there you go. Uh, once, I get, once I get back in there. Yeah. Um, just dealing with this injury and whatnot, but I have been working on Cyber Dragons. I got the pendulums all together. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm set. I'm ready for for locals, like a lot of people I think are. Yeah. But why? There is no uh-huh. locals. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready for the that's, crush that's, card to be that's ending. That's the that's the eternal question. Like why? The chain needs to resolve. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Everybody's just anxious to get out, you know? And they are. Do something you enjoy. And they like are. Like you said, Mike, in, at the beginning, if you don't know how to play, lo- Locals isn't just a whole, you know, a little sweat fest or whatever you might think it is. Yeah, you got to learn. Of people there that'll help you learn to play. Again, yeah. You know, it's that camaraderie. It's the it's the good time yeah. you know, with each other. So yeah. that's what people are missing the most. I agree. That it's a, it's a community thing, you know? Yeah. It's really, you gotta do it for the community. Do it for the community, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, now, PH, you said you had a fun little activity that you might, might have had a uh, planned I, for. Uh... I just wanted to ask a, a generic question and see. You know, I got a couple little things I, I looked up like throughout Yu Gi Oh's history and. Oh yeah. Oh the can, uh, the things we, that we, we the can, things that you learned. A little bit of knowledge here, real quick, to okay. end, the, end the stream. Okay. All right. So. Rhino and Mike, what can you name the first ban list that came out for Yu Gi Oh? Four cards got banned. Ooh, I might be able to answer this. You know what? what? Um, okay. yeah, Rhino, do you want to take the floor and go first? Hmm. You want to take a guess? We'll give. We'll 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 do one point for a correct answer. Okay. 
I have my list, but I'll let Ryan make his answers here. I'll, I'll write it down because right now I have my uh, I have my my uh, screen up, so I'm gonna actually write it down just so that way people don't think I'm cheating right now. So go ahead, Ryan. You can uh, you can. Go I, ahead. I don't even know where to start on this one because <laughs> back then I didn't. I you know up until probably you know. 2010 I didn't even really play per se competitively like I, I still you know would normal summon a fusion monster <laughs> yeah yeah that's so uh, I honestly couldn't even give you a guess on it I, I could I could guess but yeah, I, I don't I, even I think you take a stab at it the list it's a pretty big list pretty, pretty lengthy list I mean the, this is the four cards that were banned correct Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess this. Well, I don't know what sets. Was Snatch Steel in I'm there? I misspoke. I misspoke. I misspoke. Or Delinquent Duo? Well, I'm sorry, Kyle. Uh, I'm sorry, PH. What yeah. were you saying? Let me uh, let me correct myself here for a second. So, let me let me give you a little more perspective. Okay. There was four monsters, seven spells, and two trap cards. They all got banned on the first ban line. Oh, okay, okay. I I I, I think made four cards as a whole, but there was that's, that's like yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a yeah, lot. I'm sorry. More. And let me give you let me give you a date. Maybe the date will help. This was October of two thousand and four. Okay. First time a, a card was ever banned. There's been ban lists before this, but there were never cards that were just flat out like illegal to play moving forward. There were limits. Yeah, there are limits and everything. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So. Four monster cards, so we want to take a stab at it. I do have one. I think it was Cyberstein. He was banned, like, immediately. That's one. Off the top of my head. Another one? Oh, gosh. Banned. And it's funny, because when you hear them, you'll think, wait, that card was banned, but back so, in those days... Cyberstein is now on the list. Maybe what didn't come about out? Regaki? Pot Regaki of... is one of the cards banned. Okay, yeah. I know Pot of Greed oh, wasn't one for a while, but Pot of Greed was banned, I think, on the very first time there was banned cards. Is, is Pot of Greed on there? Pot of Greed is not on there. Interesting. Wow. Dude, this actually is kind of fun. Is, is Carpy's Feather Duster on there? Carpy's Feather Duster is on the list. Two yeah. points for Rhino. Oh, Light? man. Okay. Um, man. Mike, go for two. What's called the Haunted Band? All the haunted is not on the ban list. Oh man, Rhino! I'm I'm gonna guess Dark Hole. Dark Hole is on the list. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> Rhino! How oh about my God. Oh, here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Last turn was that banned? Last turn was not banned. What? That was literally my next guess, dude. All like, right, your oh, turn, oh, Rhino. Please. All right. Well, if Pot of Greed's not banned, but I'm gonna guess Graceful Charity because that's just a broken Oh my God, Ryan, you're killing me on this thing. You're four, killing. Four to zero. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, all right, Aaron, pain, all right, painful choice, painful choice, or painful, no, uh, painful decision. That was called. Yeah, painful decision. Painful decision is not on the list. This painful choice no. or decision. I forget what it was called. Neither. 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 Mal. Oh my gosh. Rhino for five in a row. Was BLS out then? Black BLS was not on the list, unfortunately. I don't think it was. Well, yeah, I think BLS was out at, at that time. He it was. was out. He was it out. Was yeah. Out. I'm trying to think of other crazy. Get cr- on the board. Um, I want to say something like maybe like Breaker the Magical Warrior was he banned? No, he was not. It's a good guess though. He he was limited, but he was not banned. Oh, man, this is crazy. Ryan? I know, I know. Delinquent duo got banned early. Delinquent duo is on the list. Okay. 100%. So a fifth point. So to go over what we have on the list so far, we 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 really hit home on the spell cards here. We got <laughs> Dark Hole, Delinquent Duo, Graceful Charity, Harpy's Feather Duster, and Regaki. So we're missing two more spell cards. We still need all four monsters, and we're missing two traps. Okay. How about spell card? The Forceful Sentry. Forceful Sentry is not on the list. Man, I'm doing terrible. Rhino? Rhino with all five so far. We have four monsters. Two See, I'm left. just thinking of cards down. that are just like complete board wipes back in the game. Mirror yep. Force. Mirror Force is on the list. Oh, <laughs> Jesus yep. Christ. Yep. So we got one of the two trap cards. We still have two more spells and we have four monsters. I'm surprised you guys aren't hitting on the monsters. Oh, I'm try- well, I'm trying to think of like amazing Rhino, monsters. Rhino took a stab at it. And he, he he was he was in the he was in the right ballpark, but uh, 
It has to be like a not the right card. A big like boss monster. Oh, Chaos Emperor Dragon. Chaos Emperor Dragon is on the list. Oh, yeah, I, I finally, know. finally, God. <laughs> yes, Mike is on the board. So we have one of the monster cards that is banned. It was not BLS. It was Chaos Emperor. I I remember back in the day that I don't know if it was banned or um. Golly. Magician of Faith. Magician of Faith. I think that's a pretty good guess, too. I would have yeah. guessed that, but it is not on the list, unfortunately. Uh, What's a monster? Gosh, it must be... It's probably just, like... It has to be, like, a level 5 or level 6, like, monster. Like, a tribute summon monster. Or like, is Jinzo on the list? Jinzo is not on the list. Okay. Because I remember he... I, I think he was, he was uh, a 1 at some point. I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's the complete opposite of what you just said. There, there's nothing high leveled outside of the Chaos Emperor Dragon on the list. You gotta think pretty basic here. Wow. Basic Yu-Gi-Oh! How it was back then. Mechanical Chaser. Oh, oh no, no, no. Oh, oh, big... oh, no, no, no. Because uh, Gemini Elf was out at that time, so that was bigger than him. Alright, never mind. That was a waste of a guess. Rondo, it's your turn. <laughs> hmm... Got three monsters. Well, I, I knew this card got banned at one point, and I know it came out early. Just because of Tor God, I'm going to guess Sangan. Sangan is on the list. Ugh. Search cards. All right, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback off that and say Witch of the Black Forest. Witch of the Black Forest is also on the list. You okay. Have the search cards. All right, so there's one monster card left. It's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty well known card. I'm surprised. This is, this is, uh, this is a card that's still banned to this day. Actually, that's still on the list. Ooh, I think I, I I think I know which one it is. But uh, Rhino, it's your choice now. Yeah. Hmm. So we still have one monster. We have one trap, and we have two spell cards left on the list. Well, I'm just gonna take a shot at Reborn. Monster Reborn because... is on the list. Yep. That is yeah. on the list. Wow. It is on the list. All right. So we have one monster. We have one spell and one trap left. Okay. I I think I know what the monster is. Yada Garasu. It is Yada Garasu. Okay. Yes. Yada Garasu with the Chaos Emperor and Void. I would have never guessed that. Yeah, yeah. still banned to this day. Broken yeah. card. Yes, sir. And so, okay, so we have one spell and one trap left. Rhino, do you want to take a stab at it? Hmm. Torrential Tribute? No. I don't know when that came tribute. out. Pretty, pretty good guess, though. I'd yeah, that's a good guess. Uh, a trap. Solemn Judgment? Was that banned? No, it was not. Okay, because that, that that was a three for the longest time. How about we do? How about I forget who guessed first? But why don't we do like one more guess each, and then we'll just kind of uh, reveal that, that, that. That's fine. Right, no, you can go. You can get the uh, your your next chance. Good. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna guess a card that came out a long time ago that let you not play Yu-Gi-Oh. That still is around. That lets you not play Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. One of the bane of my existence is in Pendulum, Imperial Order. And Imperial Order is a trap on the list. Oh, God. Imperial Now, the question is, Mike, can you end it off strong? With the spell? With the last card on the list. It is one spell card. Okay, I got to think about this, because I can't it's believe painful I'm choice. I'm happy to give you a hint. I'll tell you what kind of spell card it is, if you'd like, as a hint. Okay. I mean, I don't know if you want me to be, like, specific and just say it's not a normal spell, or if you would like I, to be a little I, bit I, I think we'll go with that. It's not a normal spell. That's probably right, it's not more... not a normal spell. Okay, no. then it has to be a quick play spell. I'm going to say it might be... The, I'm just speaking out loud. Maybe... Could it be an equip spell? I was thinking it might be Mystical <laughs> Space Typhoon, but if it's an equip <laughs> spell... Because the worst... Wait, I, I, wait, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess. I'm, I'm going to guess, because back then they were powerful. It's Mage Power. You are in the right ballpark, but unfortunately is not Mage Power. Ah, oh, what was it? United We Stand? It is United We Stand. Oh, so close. Uh, oh, wait, I just United. saw Tom. Tom wrote that. United We Stand. Tom got uh, it right. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Good job, Tom. You got it. Yeah. I like Tom's guess of Man Eater Bug. I was, like, trying to oh, get I, it together. I, oh, man, that's uh, funny. But, yep. That's anyway, funny. Fellas. But, yeah. So, uh... Rhino definitely gets the, the celebratory lap for the most points there on the guesses, but... I'm proud of you, Rhino. Pretty good, pretty good. Especially considering yeah. I don't think any of us played during this time. No, I was I'm, literally just guessing old cards I was, I was playing with my friends, but, like, I was not playing seriously. I was not playing I, meta or anything. Yeah. I first yeah. started playing in sixth grade, fifth or sixth grade, with a couple friends from school, but I definitely was not playing bandless stuff and... 
hundred percent didn't have any of these cards outside of like the structure deck cards, you know. They're, they're pretty standard cards in here, a couple yeah. of them, but anyway, well, thanks for thanks for playing. Thought it was a little fun game. Yeah, it was a fun little game. I like that. I'll have to come up with that like for future like streams, like little like quizzes like that. Yeah, for sure. I enjoyed for that. Sure. Gets people gets people involved. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not sure how much longer you guys want to, uh, talk here, but I think I do want to maybe finish off with one last thing is what did you, like, this is actually one of PH's other suggestions. So this is all credit to him. What did you learn in the last year as far in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh? Isn't that what you, uh, we were talking, discussing earlier? Like, uh, just like something, something maybe you saw that I was going to go, what'd you learn this week? Like, is there Oh, this week. I'm sorry. This week. Like, okay. Super broken. And you're just like, wow. Like, you know, I feel the need to share this. Like, yes. With the public. I saw the one card deep sea diva ripped the whole hand out of opponent combo, which was just absolutely redonkulous with Monglacia. And then they synchro and then they, they tear their whole opponent's hand out of their hand and end on oral sword with three negates and a VFD. That seems fair. <laughs> that's, now, I, now, what that's I want to know is, like, if you had the Ash, were they? did they just pass? Like, do they have anything else? Or you just Ash? Well, them? there's some card that I've never even heard of that, like, lets you look at your opponent's hand, and then you can, like, pick a card out of their hand, and you can, like, do that before anything if you hard draw it, before yeah, you normal summon the Diva. The trap card? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, there, there's a... I'd have to, I'd have to double check and look at it. Yeah, because yeah. there's trap cards like a Pointer of the Red Lotus, which basically acts as like, yeah, like a trap dust shoot. I know there's one yeah, Glacia. Yeah, it must be that then. It must be that. Yeah. Yeah. I was also going to say maybe a, uh, yeah, that's all I can really think about. As far as cards that, 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 let, that let you rip a card of the opponent's hand. But, uh. All right. How about how about it, you, uh, it lets you look at it, which is the most broken. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Knowledge is power, man. Well, that's why Trap Dushi was so good because, like, it's yeah. it's because you see what you, you see exactly what the opponent has, and then you choose the right card to put back, and that's like that could ruin their entire hand. You know, like you put back that yeah. like against Eldritch, you put back that that zombie guy. It's like all right, well, your hand might, might be bad now. You know. I think it's just like the knowledge of the hand too. Knowledge so is important. important, yeah. Because then, because then you know exactly how many. Because like a lot of times people will bait you with like cards, and then it's like, well, now that you know what's in their hand, you don't. You're not baited anymore. You'll you'll negate the right card that you want to negate because you know exactly what they're capable of doing. So that's always important, I think. Yeah, that's. I've always said like that. Knowing if you can know your opponent's hand, that's that's game breaking. You know, you should win yeah. that. Ninety-nine percent of the time, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, that's so strong in Yu-Gi-Oh. But yeah. that combo, just in itself, I think I saw it on Team Samurai X. It, I just, I'm not like, a fan. Wow. Of, I, I'm not a fan of Team Samurai X. Ugh. Yeah, neither am I per se. But just to like look at, it, like, I think it popped into my feed. It was just like one card degenerate combo, and I was like, what is this? The Karakuri just combo. The normal- <laughs> Normal summon of a diva, and then they lose their whole hand, and you end off savage dragon, three negates, and DFD. I mean, that's pretty just... good. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. How about you, uh, Mr. PH? What did you learn this week? Unfortunately, we kind of like touched on it already, but I just kind of want to hit home again on just like how outrageous the Starlight Rare market is right now. I mean, it's just like mm-hmm. ridiculous. Like the worst Starlight Rares are two hundred dollars right now. I mean, it's like it's basically at that point. Like I'm trying to think of which one it was. It was it's the trap card. It's like the dragon ruler one. Mm-hmm. It was like it was like sixty dollars. It's now like one fifty. Like all the starlight rares are just getting bought out right now, and it, it, it's truly like something else mm-hmm. um, to like see that. Um, the other thing I saw this week, I saw this one guy. He uploaded a, a video of him. He opened a PSA great, graded eight Venusaur. He picked one up to complete his uh, his PSA eight. Uh, trio of pokemon starters so i want to give out a shout out to that guy uh, the collector's vault so that's that's pretty awesome to have a psa grade eight of each of the original og starters first dead base set it's oh. quite an accomplishment oh he sounds like a cool guy yeah you should go subscribe to him oh, i'll have to go, go look him up oh wait a minute yeah. <laughs> yeah well i do appreciate that little shout out yeah that was a, that was a nice little uh milestone for me to finally get my my trio completed yeah Pretty cool, pretty cool. How about you, Mike? 
I just learned it this week. Anything crazy? I uh, I definitely did. I'm trying to think. Like in terms of like not even just Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon specifically, but just I mean usually just again I, I talk about all kinds of collectibles. I'm trying to think of something that I did learn. And I know I learn I learn something new every week, but of course when I put it on the spot, I can never think of anything. Um, I do I, I I googled up a card I want to talk about in Yu-Gi-Oh, and it was do you know what the the newest craze is for Yu-Gi-Oh? I just learned this, this learned this this week. The, the new barrier statue combo. The barrier statue combo. Yeah. yeah. I heard about that too with the the, uh, the new Gizmek guy. Sorry, yeah. The new Gizmek. It yeah. just makes me think like, is that going to be the new thing now? Everyone's going to be playing the Gizmek, and then. And now, now, water right? now granted, it's like you have to. It, people were saying you play the barrier statue of the torrent because if they play needle fiber, that's the card you target. I think I'm not even sure. Let me let me read up this guy because I don't remember exactly how he works. It's like when your opponent summons from the main deck. It's like we Gizmek, like Fox. I think his name is. Yeah. Now I just want to make sure I read this guy word for word. Yuka the festive fox. That's an interesting name. See, Japan is ultimate, bro. I, I, here we go. Each... Gizmek. I, I believe it also has something to do with, like, you need to run, like, a water, basically it's... a monster in your deck, and they were running, like, this water charmer level four. Oh, yeah, cause, well, that's how you out, I think, I think it's because that, that's how you out the combo, because you can out it by playing the water charmer, because then it gets rid of them. The water charmer can summon itself from, it's actually one of the very few examples of a card that can summon itself from the main deck. So if you if you play the Water Charmer, you can summon it out of your main deck by getting rid of your barrier statue. I, th- I think that's the combo. So with that way, you can keep playing. But here it is. So if a monster is special summoned from the main deck, I guess, oh wow, a- a- any main deck, you can summon this card from the hand. And then if this card is normal or special summoned in any way, that's interesting. I thought it was only by its own effect. Uh, you can target any monster your opponent controls, summon a monster from your hand or deck whose attack and defense are the same. And the ha- has to have the same attribute as that monster. So basically, all the barrier statues have a thousand attack and defense. So they're all potential targets to summon out of the deck. And I think because a lot of people are playing needle fiber, it's like this is the, this is the, this is like the new the new hot tech. You play the you play Gizmek Fox when your opponent plays well, basically anything. It's the summons from the main deck, and needle fiber is a good example. You can summon him, and then you can get out a barrier statue. And normally, people think the water one's the best one because everyone's playing Needle Fiber. And Needle Fiber himself does summon a monster from the main deck. So that's what I learned this week, and I was like, oh, man, I should have invested in this freaking Fox card. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were cheap, and now I'm I, I'm pretty sure they're probably up a lot more now. Let me see what they're going for. EC031. The whole set's extremely expensive for no reason. Because, well, not for no reason, but... Just well, for the reason like, that we uh, talked about. All right, the card's only yeah. 30 bucks. I, I, I heard it was like 50 So, 30, I mean, 30 is still a lot, but it's definitely not what I thought it was. But, all right. Once well, the U.S. market floods, you know, it'll yeah. be good. Uh, all right. Well, I appreciate the chat, fellas. I'm, uh... I believe I'm getting summoned for dinner. Yeah. So. No problem. I might have to get ready for work tomorrow. Adult life, you know? <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I do want to say uh, thank you for all, the, all of our listeners you know, for watching. You know, again, if you guys want to, you know, please leave comments down below. Like, you know, we, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll do my best to get back to them. Maybe, maybe I'll even have to refer to Rhino and PH for some of the answers. But yeah, like anything that we talked about regarding the current state of the game, the card market, uh, getting your friends back into playing the game, or people who are new to the game. Yeah, please write some stuff down in the comments below. And I do want to thank our. Uh, our favorite members from Community Gaming V2, PH and Rhino. Thanks again for thank thank you again for joining me on our uh, live chat. It was fun having you here. Thanks for having us, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you, Mike. Do, do you guys it's have any pleasure talking to you, boys? Yeah, all the pleasure, man. Do you guys do you guys have any any last last things you want to say? Final thoughts? Subscribe to the Collector's Vault. Likes a good dude. Makes good content. And it's a nice plethora of variety. So oh. yeah, hopefully we'll. Uh, be back on here soon. Definitely, man. Hope everyone's doing well. And uh, take care, everybody. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Yep. Have a good night, everybody.